think of the Rogers and Hart shows of the 20s and 30s. Ridiculous little stories. But the songs, their songs were thrilling. Articulate, witty, personal, intimate, heart-wrenching. Those depressing and depression years, and they were supplying the art, the, the lyrics and, and the music for a desperate population. It seems we stood and talked like this before. We looked at each other in the same way then, but I can't remember where or when. The clothes you're wearing are the clothes you wore. The smile you are smiling, you were smiling then, but I can't remember. Larry Hart in his lyrics was trying to get more deeply into the human experience. And Rogers was there to accommodate him with the melodies that italicized the words. That's what we'll remember Rogers and Hart for. And so it seems that we have met before and laughed before and loved before. But who knows where when? The Depression really wiped out so much of everything. Many of us weren't doing a doggone thing because it was starvation time. Let's rent a theater dark and invite all the producers. That'll be great. Well, everybody thought it was a great idea, except that we rented the theater with one bulb on stage, the work light, and nobody came. Except at the end of it, a tall man came over to me and he said, come with me to the uh, Barrymore Theater. And I went, and this boy said, can you sing old, sing any ordinary, regular song like Tea for Two or something? And I said, I, 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 I don't know if I know the lyrics. He said, well, I'll throw them to you. Come on. Tea for Two. And I sang along with Richard Rogers. <laughs> oh, I didn't know who it was. I didn't know it was George Abbott. It was Richard Rogers, Larry Hart. I didn't even know who they were at that time. And I got the job. The show was Pal Joey and it marked a real departure for the songwriting team of Rogers and Hart and their director, George Abbott. Based on the stories of John O'Hara, Pal Joey dispensed with the innocent optimism of the traditional musical comedy. Tawdry nightclub routines framed the story of an affair between a wealthy married woman and a sleazy gigolo. <laughs> I got to sing and dance. I had this long sequin dress cut down to there, and he sang, I'm a red hot mama, but I'm blue for you. And the lights changed as I said blue and green. <laughs> Pal Joey was an unusual event in uh, Broadway history. This was a show that wasn't sort of light and airy and amusing. It is a weird sort of enterprise. None of the characters have even a bowing acquaintance with decency. It seemed time to us, however, that the musical comedy start looking at the facts of life. Richard Rogers. Only the charm of the leading actor made his character's amoral behavior acceptable. The star of Hal Joy is Gene, Gene Kelly. He was playing a very good character for himself, a very brash, cocky person who was very randy for girls. He was very young, he wasn't yet 30. 
He was an energetic, fresh, aggressive, Irish-American presence, which had a great charm. The book was taken seriously with Rogers and Hart, and, and uh, pal Joey was really revolutionary in its time. They did a remarkable job in, in turning the musical theater into a serious art form. I'm wild again, beguiled again, a simpering, whimpering child again, bewitched, bothered, and bewildered am I. Pal Joey had no happy ending. The characters simply walked off the stage in opposite directions. Within three years, Rogers and Hart would go in opposite directions as well, ending a partnership that had lasted over two decades. The evolution of the musical into a more sophisticated art form would have to wait until Richard Rogers found a new partner in the midst of the Second World War. Mm -hmm. 